coming up on two and a half geeks we're sort of sh uh, short a geek or two i'm not really sure how the math works on this but there's a whole lot of show coming up because we haven't been on in a while i'm here marco's here we're going to talk ipad 3 awesome graphics cards so much more we should just get to the episode right now the bar has been set wicked fast it's rocked in the benchmarks we're going to up the ante uh, a little bit processing power i kind of understand this Hey, welcome to Two and a Half Geeks. You might be noticing something. This this math doesn't seem to line up at all, Marco. Um, this is I, unless unless people are calling me heavy, which they could be. I have you know, but I think what's going on right now. Dave is indisposed. Uh, Marco, so uh, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Doing fantastic. How about you? I'm I'm doing really well. I'm excited today. Uh, it's it's a good day. We haven't we haven't done a show in a while, and there's been so much news since the last episode. <laughs> I mean, like. We gotta even talk, look. We gotta talk about the iPad 3 first. I got one over here, or then the new iPad. I like it. You guys reviewed it. What's up, Marco? So uh, we, yeah, we liked it too. Um, kind of a, a no-brainer. It's probably the best tablet you could buy right now. You have it in your hands. I'm sure you've uh, learned to appreciate how gorgeous that screen is. Am I right? That display. Okay, this is what I was waiting for in a device of this of this size. When it came to the iPhone 4, my wife has one. I have an iPod Touch. When I would look at the first generation iPad, I could see the jaggedness and it started driving me a little nuts. So I, would, I said I would not buy an iPad until they upped the resolution. And they went all out. I think it's 2048 by 15 something or other, which is insane yep. because, I mean, you really got to be trying to look at the pixels if you put it in your face. So I, it's a gorgeous display. And I got to say, I got to hand, hand it to Apple for shoving a giant battery in there. Because it's got LTE and it's got the Retina display, and the battery life's still around nine or ten hours. Yep. So I, you know, Apple did a really smart thing. Not only making that screen such a high resolution, because of all the kudos they're going to get for making such a beautiful screen, but by exactly doubling the the vertical and horizontal resolution. You know, having four x the number of pixels to scale apps that aren't necessarily made to take advantage of that res is relatively easy. They're just gonna double the pixels in each direction, boom. So it was a really good move by Apple, definitely a beautiful tablet. Everybody else is gonna be playing catch up once again. Now that's not the only thing that's been going on since we've been off, off the air. <laughs> what else is going on? I know there's, you, yep. you guys have something about the Lenovo U300S Ultrabook, which is that, is that the one that's actually shaped like in a, a notebook? I'm not, I'm not being facetious. I mean, like it actually has like a little lip. The, um, the, the 300S, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a, a straight up, I'm not going to call it a basic Ultrabook, um, but it's it's Lenovo's mainstream Ultrabook. They made a couple of design decisions that that weren't the greatest. You know, they went with single channel memory, not the fastest SSD, but a solid Lenovo build quality, great keyboard. What you'd expect from a Lenovo uh, Ultrabook. Okay, so I, I tested out this very laptop myself. I had tremendous trackpad issues. I could not stop that thing from seeing a bunch of accidental inputs. Now I know you can turn off the trackpad. I understand that's simple and that's possible. But for me, I found that maddening. Did you find anything similar? We didn't, but you know, these are, when they're when they when they just launched and they they first hit the uh, first hit the scene, a, a difference in one driver revision for the. Uh, for the touchpad can make all the difference in the world for palm recognition. It may just, the one you had may have just had an older driver and it was picking up your palm constantly. Who knows? Yeah, I mean, I tried to update the drivers. I tried to do all the standard fare. I was, I just right. couldn't recommend the thing. It's actually pretty pricey from, from last time I, I got to use it. I just, like the Asus Zenbook kind of kicks its butt all over the place. The, the, we gave the Asus ZenBook the uh, the editor's choice, and at this point, I think we've checked out four or five Ultrabooks. The ZenBook remains our favorite. Yeah. What else is going on? What else has been? What what, what have we missed? Um, we had a couple of really cool reviews that went up. We don't have to spend a ton of time on them, but I want to make sure that uh, viewers come check them out. Uh, we took a look at uh, the brand new AMD Fire Pro V3900. Uh, this is AMD's entry level workstation graphics card. So this is not for gamers. This is for uh, graphics professionals that do video rendering, rendering work in AutoCAD, uh, Maya, things like that. And we also uh, actually just today, uh, today we, the, the day we're recording, uh, we put up a review of a really cool semi-mainstream gaming PC from iBuyPower, the Erebus GT. Our man Seth reviewed that. So it's not quite as expensive as those really high-end boutique systems. The machine we tested 
Um, overclocked to 4.6 gigahertz and with the Radeon 7970 came in at 24.99. Um, but just really smart component choices, nice uh, upper mainstream uh, gaming PC from iBuyPower. So come by, check that out. Well, let, let's hit the real meat here. Now, NVIDIA unleashed its Kepler line, and it's not just uh, desktop uh, GPUs. They introduced their mobile line as well. Just a, it's like one fell swoop. They're both out. Right. And apparently, they make, apparently making AMD cry. From what I've read right away, people are like, this is the end of the world when it comes to graphics. This is the perfect thing. It seems the uh, headlines <laughs> were insane. Uh, could you bring some perspective to the Kepler mania? Yes, so I'm going to bring lots of perspective. So about making AMD cry first, I'm not sure. AMD still hasn't dropped prices. And I've been saying since the uh, 7000 series launched that AMD is holding some performance in the tank with uh, driver optimizations. So don't be surprised if a performance driver hits that gives uh, you know, a few percentage points boost and the playing field is somewhat level. That's just conjecture on my part. Now, to get to Kepler, this is a, a killer architecture from NVIDIA. There is simply no way around it. For the last uh, few years, uh, AMD and NVIDIA kind of took a differing approach to their GPU design. NVIDIA was making the, the biggest, baddest chips they can. Um, it was harder to manufacture, but typically they ended up with a ultra-powerful chip. Whereas AMD would make you know, try to hit the sweet spot uh, of the market, create a really fast chip, get it to market sooner, have it for a few months before NVIDIA could respond, um, and then come out with a you know dual GPU card that sort of leapfrogged NVIDIA's single GPU. And it went like that for a couple of years. Now with Kepler, NVIDIA's taken a, a different approach. The GK, I'm going to start with the desktop stuff first. The GK104 GPU that's in the new GeForce GTX 680 is actually a smaller chip than the Tahiti GPU in the Radeon 7970 even though the GeForce turned out to be faster overall. It's, uh, it's also a lower power chip, and it has a single clock domain like Tahiti. Older GeForces, the shaders ran faster than the, cores, uh, than the, than the GPU core itself. And all of these little design changes resulted in a chip that was really supposed to be NVIDIA's mainstream Kepler part, but it's outperforming AMD, AMD's high-end chip. So that's why, you know, the, the folks in the AMD camp are like, wow, what's NVIDIA's big GPU going to do? Now, with this desktop version now, it's supposed to be like really ultra low power. So the fact is people don't need to change their power supplies or anything. And you get a huge performance boost. Is that right? Yeah. So versus NVIDIA's previous high-end single GPU versus the GTX 580, the GTX 680 is roughly 50 to 60 percent faster across the board but it also consumes less power. So the GTX 680 has only two six pin PCI Express power connectors. It's a 195 watt card versus you know, 240, 250 watts for the GTX 580. So literally like across the board or every metric, the GTX 680 uh, outperforms the previous gen and uh, AMD's current Tahiti GPU. It's got more performance, performance per transistor, more prefer uh, performance per die size, more performance per watt. Just a, it really is a killer architecture across the board. Now, the same is true about their mobile chip. Now, the, the mobile version yep. of this, which usually I think these things are staggered, but NVIDIA said, no, they're both out at the same time. Now, these things are supposed to be going into Ultrabooks, which is supposed to have some crazy battery life and all kinds of things like that. But for Ultrabooks to have a discrete graphics card, that's, I mean, that's somewhat unusual. But if, uh, from what the numbers are for NVIDIA, from what I've seen, it seems like it'd be very possible to put an, a discrete graphics card in an ultrabook and still have crazy battery life. Could you tell us about the mobile version of this? I can. So, you know, the, the principles that make the desktop GPU so, so nice kind of trickle down uh, very well into the mobile space. Um, the, we, we took a look at the GeForce GT 640M. Um, it's the, the mainstream uh, Kepler-based uh, mobile GPU, and it was in an Acer Ultrabook. Dave actually took a look at that and wrote it up. Now, the the... The mobile GPU that we looked at, if you took the desktop part and slashed off a bunch of the shaders, you have the mobile part. So it's it's a smaller chip, it's a low power chip, and because of the you know the the, the technologies Nvidia has implemented, you know, 28 nanometer manufacturing, um, it's a, a more power efficient architecture. The things that Nvidia have done have resulted in a GPU that outperforms any of the integrated graphics that are going to be in an, in an Intel processor in an Ultrabook. 
uh, yet still low power enough where it's not going to completely kill the battery. So they really struck a nice fine balance. And yeah, the, the mainstream Kepler parts, you are going to see them in Ultrabooks. That, see, that, I've been wondering about the success of Ultrabooks. Could they possibly be the future? I always figured that we're going to go thin and light. When you have this kind of uh, performance shift uh, in, in graphics cards that can fit, and also it's the, it's the power the real, that's the real issue I was found with, with, yep. with uh, gaming laptops at all. Not just gaming laptops, having a discrete graphics card in a laptop usually meant you were going to lose a lot of power. And this looks like this is going to change things. Looks like we're going to have really thin and light and graphically powerful machines without having to rely on Sandy Bridge or APUs and these kinds of things. I, I mean, do you, where do you see this going? Um, I, I'm not. I wouldn't say it's gonna. It's gonna change things. The you could still put a discrete GPU in an ultrabook. It would just not be quite as fast as as what Nvidia has here. Um, I think you're gonna see. You are gonna see some of the more performance oriented ultrabooks feature the discrete GPU, just so you really have. You know, you can have your cake and eat it too. You can have this really small machine that is capable of gaming, yet you get good battery life. There is still going to be a market for people that want, you know, don't really care about gaming performance, don't really need a discrete GPU, where they simply want the thinnest, lightest, longest battery life um, possible. And that's still going to come from an Ultrabook without a discrete GPU. But it's nice to have the option. And that's what NVIDIA has done. They've given the market the option to do it if it wants to. Any other Kepler details that uh, we're leaving out? Um, well, I, come check out the article because I had like something like 16 pages up. Dave had another 9 or 10 on the, uh, on the mobile part. So we have tons of reading for everybody to do. Um, the, the other takeaways with Kepler is it's not just for gaming. Um, it's got integrated uh, video encoding engine. You've got full support for NVIDIA's 3D Vision and PhysX. So it's also... Uh, capable of pushing up to four displays. Previous NVIDIA cards can only do two. Um, so it's not quite on the level of AMD where they can do six from a single card, but four is, is more than enough in my opinion. I don't know many people running more than even three displays. So just uh, across, across the board from you know every bullet point you could ask for in a graphics card, uh, NVIDIA has upgraded it versus their previous stuff. Onto the world of somewhat silliness, maybe the world of Warcraft. Uh, now, <laughs> there, there are some. Uh, you guys have a gallery up of retired World of Warcraft servers. Uh, okay, wait a second. So I assume uh, this is what I know about the game. Multi. It's got a bunch of people. They all play it on a bunch of servers. Why was why why was it is it Blizzard? Blizzard? Why would they retire servers? And then what do they do with them? So this is awesome. I, I don't play WoW either. Um, I'm married and have kids. If I got sucked into WoW, who knows um, how my kids would grow up and if my wife would stay with me. Um, but that's another story. <laughs> this is just one of those cool, geeky things that I just love to see. Our guy, Paul, yeah, he, uh, Blizzard was uh, auctioning off, Activision Blizzard was auctioning off retired servers, servers that have been taken out of commission and upgraded for whatever reason. And the, uh, the proceeds, they went to St. Jude's Children Hos Children's Hospital and it, it's just a really cool machine. So a server that was actually running, uh, you know, one of the realms in World of Warcraft was retired. They made it kind of decorative. They put a plexiglass top with some nice etchings and put a little plaque explaining what parts of the world were being run on that server. And uh, Paul, Paul Lilly bid on it and won it and now has it on display. And I am completely jealous. You're jealous of, of, of server. Well, it doesn't have, does it have any function anymore, or is it just simply an artifact? Because I mean, you wouldn't want to use it, right? <laughs> right. I mean, I think they took the drives out. Um, I'm, I doubt they damaged the motherboard, but I think if you put drives in it, it would work as a server. But that's not the point, man. That's like gaming history right there. And now he's got it in his office on his wall. It's on display. That is just pure geek goodness. I love it. Well, um, I would assume if, if uh, Star Wars The Old Republic keeps taking away WoW gamers, they might be retiring a lot more servers over Activism uh, Blizzard. <laughs> That's right. I'm paying attention. I know what's actually going on uh, a little bit. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, I'm assuming you, you get your chance. There's always a chance for artifacts. I, I get to enjoy having old uh, Palm PDA watches, which is, that's my favorite yeah. artifact from the old days. And then I, I have a, a collection of, of vintage PCs that I still have tucked away. Everything from a Commodore 64 to an Atari ST, an Amiga 500, a TI 99. And then my other little uh, collection is 80s vintage BMX bikes. But that's another conversation. <laughs> I, I had to get rid of my old PCs because I was moving to a small place. And I'm like, no, I'm taking the processors. 
So I have a, P, well, I have a Pentium 100 sitting around just in case. It might become a <laughs> necklace piece, something, maybe, I don't know, some things from my a ring or two. It'd be insane. So I, I'm the youngest of seven kids. So in my par- in the, you know, all my brothers and sisters were married out of the house when I was still, uh, still at home. So I still have a ton of storage at my parents' house. And that's where all the stuff is. I haven't moved it here yet. I'd, I'd be busting at the seams if I moved it to my place. Well, lucky you, because I got shipped a whole bunch of stuff myself. Let's, 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 <laughs> so I have, to, like, I have to give up things. I hate giving up things. Let's talk about Wing Commander, which I thought was yes. dead a long time ago. But it's back? It, it, is, it is back with a vengeance, and it's awesome. This is just another one of those cool stories that you know old-school geeks just love. If you've been around PC gaming for a while... It, Wing Commander has to conjure up fond memories of, you know, space uh, flight simulations and, you know, space fighting from years ago. Um, A team of people that were fans of the Wing Commander series have been working on a sequel um, for 10 years now, according according to the site that launched it. And the uh, Wing Commander Darkest Dawn is what the release is called. They're giving the game away for free. It takes place between the time frame of Wing Commander 2 and Wing Commander 3. With updated graphics, it uses the uh, the Free Space 2 uh, open source engine, and it's just cool. You know, it's the the graphics aren't cutting edge like some of the games you can get today, but all of Wing Commander goodness with updated graphics. You know, 70s cinematics, tons of missions, all of the ships that you grew to love back in the day are in the game. It, it's just really cool stuff. Now, do, do the developers have the rights to this game? Like, is this thing going to be around, or is somebody going to sue them out of existence? <laughs> You know, I, I I don't think they had the blessing to do it. I don't think they have any, you know, I don't think maybe legally they probably couldn't do this. I'm really not sure. But when we first put our first story up on it, one of the original writers from Wing Commander 2 and 3 commented on the story and said, hey, I don't speak for uh, for Origin or EA, but, and, but we think this is great. So it was cool to kind of get, you know, that uh, blessing from one of the writers. You know, and it's out there on the web now. What are they going to do? You know, you can't you you, you can't put the uh, I don't know which you can't put the genie back in the bottle, that kind of thing. Yeah, we'll use that one. I was going to use something a little dirtier and stop myself. <laughs> <laughs> toothpaste in the in the in, in the toothpaste tube. These these are the these there are the go. rated yeah, I was going to use I was going to say something about a goose, but I stopped myself. Let's not do that at all. But I still think <laughs> if if uh, EA and they want if they see this thing, they're like, you know, we should cr- crush it. They should just buy it and just put it as a bonus and actually release their own uh, sequel if they want to. So, if you are interested in any of the... We went through a lot of stories today because it's been a <laughs> while. Uh, if you're interested in any of the stuff we talked about and you want to get, you want to read the 16 pages about Kepler, was it Kepler? I'm pretty sure. Yes. You can do that at hothardware.com. All the details are over there. Actually, before we go over there, are there any contest details or hints or anything running around? It, we're getting closer. I know we've been hinting at this one for a long time, but it's definitely going to happen. We're, we're just waiting for N- NVIDIA to kind of launch something that we can can, can latch on to. And, uh, yeah, we're going to be giving away some very cool NVIDIA-based stuff that's not a graphics card. And it, it may transform somebody's life in a prime way. I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> but, anyway, if you want to find hot hardware content around the web, you can do that. There's dig.com slash hot hardware. There's twitter.com slash hot hardware. There's facebook.com slash hot hardware. Or youtube.com slash hot hardware vids for all kinds of awesome motion picture goodness. I'll tell you that. It really is goodness. I said awesome goodness. I don't know if that's even a thing. Uh, I guess we'll be back next week. Thank you for stopping by, and we'll see you later. Ciao.